Okay, Rabbi Sai, like I said, I got an email this morning uh, asking me to give a uh, guest uh, appearance, a guest shear. I think you're going to be having the afternoon on the Gemara. So I'm going to say something that uh, from um, mine, Chesky over here is old alma mater. Me and Chesky went to Chaim Berlin. And they have a unique approach, basically, of Yitzhak Hutner. The Tzal, the Rosh Shiva, the unique approach in Machshava. And I'm going to say some stuff, basically, a compilation of some of his uh, memoriam and some other stuff. But uh, it's not so simple. You sort of got to sort of like pay attention to appreciate this. Chesky will have no problem because he's been, uh, he's been born and bred on this stuff. So we're going to start off with a famous Gemara that we know that the Gemara says in Brachis, Makim Shabal Tshuva Imdim Ein Tzadikim Gemur Michayim Lamad. Gemara makes a statement that Bal Tshuvas are on a much higher level, or in some sense, are, have a place, a stead, much higher than a Sad Gomer. But the Gemara doesn't say why. Why is that so? But the Rambam, when he brings down the Gemara, he gives a reason. He says, Kalayma Malasin Gdoyimaz Elu Shalai Chatu. The Bal Tshuva, who has been um, accustomed to sin, is higher than the Sad Gama who never sinned. Why? Because they have to work extra hard to subdue their desires. Meaning, the Bal Tshuva has been habituated in, uh, in uh, venerated, he's been, has an invertency, he's been ready, been it becomes habit to do sin. So it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop. A tzaddik gummer never did it in the first place. Of, of, of course there was some difficulty not to do it and not to continue to do it, but he never did it. So he never had the taste of the pleasure. But someone who becomes uh, addicted to something, as we all know, it's very hard to stop. And therefore the Balchuva who is able to stop and doesn't sin anymore, in that sense, he's considered on a higher level than about than a tzaddik gomer. That's what the, the Rambam explains. Oh. But on this Rambam, we have two major questions. Question number one. This we have to understand the the, the major difference between tshuva and just porish minachet. For example, someone has been doing an avera for a while. And one day he decides, I'm not going to do it. Right? Let's say the institution of tshuva we never heard of. There's no such thing as Yom Kippur. There's no such thing as Rosh Hashanah. There's no such thing as El. You never heard of it. It never happened. Would you say that someone who's done it a very 10 times can do it the 11th time? What do you say? Well, he did it 10 times. He might do it the 11th time. Of course not. Someone who's done it a very ten times doesn't give him, doesn't validate or give him the ability to do it, give him the allowance to do it another time. Right? That's nothing to do with tshuva. Parish Menachet has nothing to do with tshuva. Even if you could not do tshuva. Like the Gemara says famously, Misha Chashum, Yaxavi Chashum, someone ate garlic. It's referring to someone who was in a shear and ate garlic. And basically, he disturbed the rabbi because he ate garlic. He should eat garlic again? He should do it again? No. What does they got to do with me? Right? Just like a Sadiq Gomor shouldn't do a Vera, someone who did it a Vera ten times shouldn't continue doing it. That has nothing to do with Tshuva. So what, what yes, does Tshuva kind of connote? Tshuva means it's a whole different ballgame. Tshuva is that you somehow other, magically, numinously, you somehow other eradicate what you've done in the past. Now, clearly part of Tshuva is not to do a very again, obviously. But, but not to do a very again is not specific to tshuva. That's not unique to tshuva. Tshuva has to do more with undoing the past. Oh, so now, if that's so, the Rambam doesn't, doesn't make it so much sense. The, Gumar, the Rambam says, why is about tshuva the, the um, Actuation, what we are putting our emphasis on. Why is the Balchuva better than a Tzadagomer? Oh, because the Balchuva, it's so hard for him not to, not to sin anymore because he's been doing it for such a long time. That has nothing to do with the Balchuva. That has nothing to do with the Balchuva. For example, 
let's say a person says, I've been sinning 10 times. You know, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm not going to deal with that right now. From here on in, I want to now, I don't want to do the, I don't want to do the 11th time. Is he about tshuva? No. He's not about tshuva. He says, I don't, I'm going to forget about the, I'm going to forget about my hit, my, my I'm not going to, I'm going to forget about the last of errors. I don't want to deal with that. Right now, I'm not going to do the 11th of errors. Is he about tshuva? Definitely not about tshuva. Is it difficult for him not to do the very 11th time? Extremely difficult, because he's an habituated. So the Rambam's explanation why about tshuva is greater than Sadiq Gomer has nothing to do with about tshuva. He could have, the Rambam should have said, someone who's been doing chet for a lot of long time, and he decides not to do the chet now, a Polish a chet, he's greater than a Sadiq Gomer. That's what he should have said. Because why? Because Porsche Mechet is very difficult for him to be Porsche. But if the Ra- this is a, it's a it's a it's a question that you have to have a, an ear for. But if the Rambam talks about about tshuva, the, the about tshuva, the aspect of uh, of the difficulty being Porsche Mechet has nothing to do with your, if you're about tshuva. Even if you're not about tshuva and you just don't want to continue the chet from here on in, you, the Rambam would be applicable. So the basic question is. Why does it say that about tshuva is greater than a sad gamor? Because it's difficult for him to do a chet. It has nothing to do with about tshuva. It has to do with just someone who decides not to do a chet here on in. It has nothing to do with whether trying to rectify what was done in the past. Right? Oh, for example, the Rebbeinu Yoyin explains. The Gemara Marcus says that someone who is presented with a chet and doesn't do it, is considered he did a mitzvah. What mitzvah did he do? You're a presenter with an avera. I don't know, someone presents you with a cheeseburger and you don't do it. You didn't do a, you didn't do a avera. What mitzvah do you get? But the Gemara says you get a mitzvah. What mitzvah do you get? You get the mitzvah of Yir Zachet. That's what Ben Yarn explains. You get the mitzvah of fearing God. Right? So now, someone has been doing a avera 10 times. And the 11th time he says, I'm not going to do it. No, no, I don't care. I'm not, not because of my past. I'm not trying to rec- rectify anything. I'm just not going to do it now. He'll also get the mitzvah of, of Yer Sachet. Will he get the mitzvah of Tshuva? No. Because he's not trying to do Tshuva. He says, what was, was. I'm not trying to rectify that. That's not my, that's not my agenda. So you can be perish Menachet because you want to do Tshuva. Or you can be perish Menachet because of Yer Sachet. Right? Asad the Gomer, when he's perish Menachet, Asad the Gomer that's given a cheeseburger, he doesn't do tshuva because he never ate a cheeseburger. He has to do his year sachet. That's to do his year sachet. That's the mitzvah of year sachet. But a uh, bal tshuva, when he's Polish minachet, it's not only because of year sachet, it has to be because he's a, he wants to rectify the past. He wants to be a bal tshuva. So again, the question is the, the, the Rambam who says, oh, the bal tshuva is on such a high level because it's difficult for him. Well, that has nothing to do with bal tshuva per se. That has to do with anyone who just wants to not sin from here on in or from here, for, for here on forward but it's not, it has nothing to do with whether rectifying the past this is the question that the Pach Yitzhak asks oh. either you appreciate it or you don't the second question is a very strong question the Rebbe Minyayna the, the Rizal Salanter says in his famous book on Musr that we have a Mishnah that says Lefum Sar Agra according to the difficulty is the reward but the Rabbi Yisrael Salanta says that's only if the difficulty was external, meaning was superimposed. But if you put yourself in a difficult situation and because of your, because of your negligence you put yourself in that situation, you don't get any, you don't get any extra, extra schar. For example, so let's say Shachar 730. So, for some, some guy decided to stay up all night reading comic books. So it's like 5.30 in the morning. Oh, I gotta wake up in two hours. Two hours later, he wakes up. He takes all of his, all of his powers of uh, discipline, and he wakes up. And there's a guy next to him who had eight hours sleep. And he wakes up. Oh, you say, wow, the guy woke up after only two hours sleep. The film Saragra says there be so fun to know. You're a moron. What do you stay up for two? What do you stay up watching comic books? For? What do you stay up uh, reading comic books for five hours? You put yourself in that situation. You don't get any extra schar for waking up after two hours. You shouldn't have put yourself in that place in the first place. Now, this is, you know, this is abstract, you know. 
I'm not getting a case where the guy had to read the comic book because he had to, uh, I don't know, he had to uh, de decompress. I'm going in abstract, an abstract case where there was absolutely zero reason for him to stay up reading comic books for five, six hours. And, he decide, and then he wakes up a shock with, with great difficulty. Oh. If that's so, this is a famous Yisraeli Yisrael Slanta. If so, the Ram makes no sense. What does the Ram say? You know about Tshuva! We're gonna get, he, he's on such a high uh, plane. He's on a, such a high stead. Higher than the Tzadik You know why? Because it's so difficult for him not to sin anymore. Uh, excuse me, why is it so difficult for you not to sin anymore? Because you decided to sin for absolutely no good reason, right? Again, Baal Tshuva and the Ramam doesn't mean what we call Baal Tshuva. You know, a guy who had no religious background and become... About, that, 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 that's common day uh, uh, parlance. But in the, in the Gemara, and in the Ram, when it says Baal Tshuva, it means a guy who went to Yeshiva, a Haredi guy, who went off the derech, and then that, that, that's what it means in the Ram. So, what does the Ram mean? Oh, the Baal Tshuva! Oh, it's on such a high level because it's so difficult that he's so habituated. He's an inverterate sinner. He's addicted. Well, yeah, why should he get any, 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 uh, any uh, credo, any, um, a, a coup, right? Why should he get any um, a kudos or any applause because now difficult and you're not doing it anymore. Yeah, you, you made it, you did it to yourself. You shouldn't have done it to yourself. So you don't deserve anything for that. You don't deserve any applause, right? Or any, uh, nothing. So this is a very strong question. So you hear? Again, the first question was, why does the Ramam say that the Baal Tshuva is better than the Sadiq Gomer? Seemingly, it doesn't do with the Baal Tshuva, it has to do with just someone who decides not to sin anymore, which explains it's not necessarily about Tshuva. Second question is, what are we giving him any, uh, any, any extra credit? What are we giving him any uh, applause? Right? Kudos. But you did it to yourself. You shouldn't have done it to yourself. Oh. So to answer this, we're going to say, um, we're going to see a, 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 a fascinating Gemara. And based on that fascinating Gemara, we'll be able to answer both these questions. The Gemara says in the Yuma and the Peivav, there's a famous Gemara about Tshuva. It says, Great is Tshuva that God readily accepts it. He says, you know, you can start up with a person, maybe the person will be pacified, maybe won't be pacified. And then it says, based on the Pasuk, anyone who does tshuva, God has great gratitude towards him, shemach sakhle toiva, means the Pasuk. Then it says, it's like he brought parm. It's like he brought parm. It's like he brought kabanas. Right? Based on the Pasuk, uh, that's the uh, of uh, uh, Shabbos Tshuva. And then the Gemara says, don't think it's like he brought a carbon, a chayva, an obligatory carbon. It's as if he brought a voluntary carbon. Someone who does Tshuva, it is as, it is as if, Rashi says, that it's, a, it's as if he volunteered and brought a carbon. And uh, Rabbi Shalom says, wow, this is amazing. It's so nice that you decided to uh, bring a carbon and to volunteer and to do something that you didn't really have to do. So the morale, what is this talking about? Someone who does tshuva, it's like he did something, a voluntary, uh, extra, extra credit type of thing. Tshuva is like the, the first thing, it's the biggest chayv in the world to do tshuva. Like the like the uh, Rebbeinian says, you have an you did terrible averus, you did averus, you have an opportunity to rectify it. There's no bigger obligation than that in the in the, in the whole world. Tshuva is like one one, the biggest obligation. So how in the world is the Gemara describing tshuva? Oh, God says it's amazing that you did it. You know, you really didn't have to do it. I didn't. It's okay. Wow, it's amazing. You know, what is that supposed to mean? It's like a, a part, it's like the It's like a carbon a dove. What is it talking about? Oh. So, to get a uh, understanding of what the Gemara means, which is, a, a, which is an amazing Kiddush, what does tshuva really mean? What is, it, what is going on in tshuva? So like we explained, the, the concept of tshuva is that magically 
The Rabbanu Shalom looks at it as if you have totally severed yourself from your past. So there was you yesterday, and there is the new you today. And there is absolutely no connection to what happened yesterday to you. It's almost like you're reborn. So if you're reborn, there's absolutely no connection to what the very that you did yesterday to what happened now. Because you didn't do it. Someone else did it. This is the uh, this is a great this is how tshuva works. Because like we explained, what is tshuva? It's not just stopping the sin. It's to rectify what you did in the past. To undo what you did in the past. That's what tshuva really is. So how do you do that? The answer is because the way the Rabbanishim looks at you, that past is not yours anymore. There's been a metamorphosis. You've been transformed. So that past is, 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 is uh, ascribed to someone else. Not you. This is the amazing Kiddush of Tshuva. So now, if, that, if, that, if that's the case, if that's the case, we understand now that's exactly what the Gemara is saying over here. It is true that you have a, a, a chiv, an um, amazing obligation to do tshuva. But once you do it, the Rebbeinu Shalom says, hey, why'd you do that? You didn't have, what are you doing that for? You didn't do any of it. Meaning before you do tshuva, you have an amazing obligation to do tshuva. And you must do it. But what happens after you do tshuva? The Rebbeinu Shalom says, oh, you're, you're a totally new person. You didn't do the variance that happened in the past. So, why did you do the tshuva for? What do you want to do the tshuva? I did a variance yesterday, day before. No, that wasn't you. That was someone else. So it's like this dichotomy over here. Post tshuva, you have this amazing obligation. After tshuva, the chiddush of tshuva is that as the Rebbe Hashem looks at it like there was no reason for you to do it in the first place because you never did anything wrong. It's almost like you're reborn and you're reborn with like I'm, a, I'm perfect, I'm pure, and I even did tshuva. Why? Well, I really didn't have to, I don't know why. I'm a new person, what do I do tshuva for? Now, obviously to, it's all in the abstract, but this is what the Gemara means. We ask, how could the Gemara say that when you do tshuva, God says, oh, it's a carbon and dova. Thank you for volunteering. I, it's so gracious of you. How could that be? The answer is, because once you do tshuva, you are considered a new person that had no past and therefore the tshuva that you did seems to be voluntary. Now, so this is the great Kiddush of tshuva. That's the uh, explanation of the moral, of the explanation of, uh, of, of the Gemara. Now, if this is so, we're going to explain this, uh, uh, we're going to get into depth uh, to explain this uh, a little bit more. But if this is so, we've answered up our, que our question on the Rambam. Both questions we answered up on the Rambam. Why is that? Is the first question answered the second Right, well, so, exactly, we'll see. Meaning, that was, that was the question. It's a little bit uh, deep. We said, wait one minute, Rambam. You're saying the Balchuba is such a wonderful person because it's so difficult for him to break his habits. So he said, yeah, well, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have created those habits in the first place. That was your fault. You don't get credit for for putting yourself in a bad situation. That is true. If it, it, that would be true if we weren't dealing in the world of tshuva. But in the world of tshuva, God says like this. You just did tshuva. You're a totally new person. Obviously the, the, mitzvah, still, the mitzvah that you did a couple days ago still stays. But anything bad from your past is not ascribed to you. So let's go to Al Baal Tshuva. Al Baal Tshuva, let's say he had a problem with uh, reading comic books. He loved reading comic books. Was a terrible addiction. Couldn't stop. Tshuva, I'm not going to read comic books anymore. And he does the whole Tshuva. Not just stopping. He does, as, he does Charata. What is Charata? He has remorse and he cries about the past. And he has Kabbalah ba, and he makes an emphatic Declaration I will not do this in the future, right? That's what tshuva is. Tshuva is what? Kabbalah laba, aziva sachet, charata. Right? So now, when you have those three main 
uh, those means uh, primary essentials. Charot is again, I will not, I, am, I feel terrible remorse. As even if it's not doing it in the future, Kabbalah is saying, make a declaration, it will never happen again. When he does the tshuva, Baruch Shalom says, you are now reborn. You are new. The past has nothing to do with you. Wait a minute, but I'm having a lot of difficult time. I'm, I'm having a real difficult time not to read these comic books. Because I've been addicted to it, I'm habituated to it. Oh, when you did tshuva, we can't change the fact that you have been habituated to it and it's an addiction. But we could say that it's not your fault anymore. We don't ascribe the fault to you. Yes, it's as if our Baal was born with an external superimposed Yetzirah. That's the way we look at it. Because since Shuva makes you into a new person, so it's like, isn't it your fault that you have to read, that you're so habituated to comic books? Isn't it your fault that you have this big desire? No, not my fault. Not me, no. It was my doppelganger. It was someone else. It was not me. I don't know how this happened. It was not me. Again, you can't change the facts that it's, it's in you. But we believe, we make believe like it's inborn. We make believe that you are, it's like you were born with this problem. I, that's not true. You, you called it to yourself. The last 10 years you've been reading comic books. No, no, no. Chuba says, those last 10 years didn't happen. Never happened. And not, not because of me. So what was the question? How in the world is about Chuva considered getting extra reward or, or sitting at a high level because it's difficult for him? We well, ask, yes, you caught it to yourself. Chuva makes it like it's not called you caught it to yourself. Chuva makes it that you're a, a carbon adava. It's like you're starting totally afresh, totally new. Everything is a new. Even the tshuva is considered something you didn't have to do. Even the tshuva is considered a new. And any difficulties that we think is your fault, it's really not your fault. It's considered superimposed. Oh. But now, if you understand this, we answered up the first question too. Oh, the first question. First question was, according to the Rambam's understanding why about tshuva is on such a high level, because it's so difficult to him. He doesn't talk about the Baal Tshuva. He could talk about anyone who, who decides not to sin from here on in. Right? Anyone who's Perush Menachet. Again, we explain, Perush Menachet is not a Baal Tshuva. Perush Menachet is only one part of a Baal Tshuva. Baal Tshuva is also Charata. Remorse of what he did in the past. Tshuva is also Kabbalah Ba. You make a declaration, never do it again. But Perush Menachet is just, okay, I sin. what was, was. I'm not getting involved in the path. I don't want to deal with that right now. Right now, I'm not going to sin from here on in. I'm not going to do the sin today. So that, for him also, it's just as difficult. So why is the Ram uh, accentuating the Baal aspect? But now we've answered it very good. If you're just Polish Menachet, let's, let's go to uh, George. George, you've been reading comic books for 10 years. You know, whatever. Doing shakas, doing shir, doing everything. It's comic books all day. Uh, not a good thing. Rosh says, you know what? It's very hard for me not to do it. What, what was, was, I did it for 10 years. It was, was. I don't feel so bad about that. What was, was. Right now, I am not going to do it. We'll say, George, you don't get any extra credit. Ah, it's so difficult for me not to do it for now. Yeah, it's so difficult, but you, because you habituated yourself in this nonsense. If you're just Polish Menachet, you will not get the extra reward for the difficulty. Because if you does Parash Menachet, you're not about tshuva. And you don't have this extra, you don't have this, this uh, din that it's like you're reborn. It's like you're a, a haven with a dava. It's like you've been recreated. So let's go to two, two people. George one, been reading comic books for 10 years. I'm not gonna do it today. I don't have regret of what I did in the past. I don't want to deal with that right now. God says, okay, you're not reading a comic book. Very nice. You're not getting any extra credit. You're not getting any extra credit. Because you put yourself in that situation. You'll get some credit, obviously. But, not more, but you're not going to get any extra credit because it's difficult for you. That's George 1. George 2 says, for 10 years he's been doing Averis, uh, reading comic book. And then he says, I'm doing tshuva. I regret what I did in the past. I'm not going to do it in the future. I'm not going to do it now. George, too, God says, whoa, you're getting major, major reward for not reading the comic book. You hear the distinction? They're both not reading the comic book. They've both been reading it for 10 years. 
But George one just said, I'm Polish Menachet. He just said, I'm not going to do it from now. I'm not, today I'm not doing it. I'm not dealing with the past. He doesn't get any extra credit. Because he doesn't have, he's like, George one, you put it, you did it to yourself. You caused it to yourself. George two, who's not only Polish Menachet, but also has the additive, the addition, that he's about Tshuva, we say, wow, George too. You're amazing. It's so difficult for you not to read this comic book. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault that it's difficult. Why is it not your fault? Because you're about Tshuva. You're about Tshuva means you're a totally new person. So any difficulties that you may have in your past life is not, is not ascribed to you. It's like you were born with those difficulties. So now we've answered both questions. Why the Rambam has to accentuate the, uh, about tshuva is a higher level than a uh Gomer. Because only about tshuva, you don't have the second question of the sum, uh, 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 from Sarah Agra. Okay, now, according to this, I want to give a, 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 a deeper understanding of what it means Kabbalah Abba. You ask anyone what does tshuva mean, they'll say, they'll say Parash Menachet, that they'll say too, obviously, but they'll also say Charata, They'll say it's a, a, a charata, a remorse, and kabbalah abba, and a exception, a uh, accepting the not to the, in the future. So what does this mean exactly, kabbalah abba? What does it mean exactly? So you would say, well, kabbalah abba really means like this. Kabbalah means like, either it means, you know, you did a chet. You did a chet with, uh, I don't know, whatever chet, yeah, uh, with a cheeseburger, you did a chet. And now you're doing tshuva, but there's no cheeseburger in front of you now. So you can't not, not eat it, because it's not here anyway. So, kabbalah haba. By saying in your mind that I won't do it anymore, that's tantamount to ziv lachet. Or you can say even better. No, kabbalah means, no, the, the cheeseburger's in front of me now, and I'm not doing it. But kabbalah haba means, I promise not to do it in the future either. So, a ziv lachet is just the immediate situation. Right now I could do the chet, I don't do it. Kabbalah Ba has in it not only the immediate, but even the future. I make a declaration, I will never do it. Right? Those are the simple understanding of Kabbalah Ba. Right? But according to our, 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 our understanding, our explanation, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. Kabbalah Ba has a, has a, 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 has a depth to it. We said that what is tshuva? What is the power of tshuva? God looks at you as a new person. Up to the degree that the tshuva you did is considered voluntary. God says, what are you doing tshuva for? You never did any of errors. This is weird. Right? That, that, that's the power. But that only happens if you understand that's what tshuva is. I mean, God looks at you as a new person if you look at yourself as a new person, it, it, it's, it's a tit for tat, right? Quit pro quo. It goes together. This is what Kabbalah Haba means. Kabbalah Haba, for example, let's say you have a person, a good person, never did anything wrong, and he wakes up and he says, I'm a Macau myself to learn an extra five minutes. That's, that's a Kabbalah. It's a wonderful thing. Obviously, when he makes a Kabbalah, when he accepts on himself something, included it that it'll be for the future too. I mean, if you accept, you can learn for five minutes. Extra, that means this day and that day and that day and that day, right? The lahaba is tangential. But by about tshuva, the, es the, the, the essence of Kabbalah is the lahaba. The essence is the future. I am a new person. This is what Kabbalah haba means. It doesn't just mean I'm making a declaration. Oh, I want to do the very obviously means to the future. It, the, the, the essence of Kabbalah Ba is I am saying now I am a totally new person. It's Lahaba. Forget the past. There is no past. So just like God looks at you that way, like we saw based on the Gemara, or Havim Nadava, God looks at two as a Nadava. That's only because that's the way we look at it. That's the way we look at it. So basically it comes out like this. Let's say you're doing tshuva. You have charata, oh yeah, I've been eating cheeseburgers. Very bad. Terrible remorse. A cheeseburger is presented to you. And so now you're doing aziv with achet. Even when you're doing aziv with achet, even when at that second that you are uh, abstaining, even at that second is Kabbalah Haba. 
Give me a kabbalah. I'm not eating right now. I'm not eating it. What do you want from me? Right now, I'm doing the most uh, paramount action possible. I'm not doing it. No, 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 no. It's not doing it. Not enough. You have to say in your mind, I'm not doing it because I am a different person. I am not doing it because the other guy did it. This is not me anymore. Meaning, you have to disassociate yourself from the past. You have to say, I did eat the cheeseburger. But that's not, now I'm not eating it because that's not me. This is all, in la- all this is latent, all this is in, 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 innate or, or built in to this concept of Kabbalah Abba. Now how do I know this? Now we're going to bring a bunch of proofs besides the, the proof that I brought from different sources. One source is, the Gemara says openly in Megillah, it t- talks about the positioning of the brachas in... Um, in Davri. And it says, we say, Das next to Tshuva, right? Right? Right, we have Chena Das and Hashivenu. Right? So we have Das right next to Tshuva. So the Gemara says, why is that so? Why is the bracha of Chena Das right next to Haroi Sibit Tshuva, right? Why are they right next to each other? So the Gemara says, based on the Pasik, Levava Yavim, because to do tshuva, you have to have a great understanding. What, what, what great understanding do you have to have? Such a great understanding. I mean, uh, to do math, you don't have to have an understanding. Uh, to, uh, what, 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 is it, what is it about tshuva that the Gemara feels you need das next to it? And that's why they juxtapose das next to tshuva. Oh. But the answer is simple, based on what we're saying now. Let's say you hear a shir, you, or you're learning a piece of Torah. You learn toises. And you understand the toises, or you understand the shir, and you chazer it, and you get it well. That's one level of understanding. But then there's a level of chidush. That's, you read a toises, you hear a shir, and you have some novel idea. You create something from that. Something new. That's a much higher level than das. The Gemara is alluding to the fact that das has to be next to tshuva, Tshuva requires the Das to be able to see yourself as a new person. This is a very abstract idea. You, right? You go to psychology, to, you go, this, is, this is like psychology 101. You're trying to break from your addictions, you're trying to break from your past. It's very, very difficult for a person to disassociate from the past. You need a certain type of level of intelligence or a certain type of uh, uh, perception. You need a lot of Das to be able to do that. Oh, I did tshuva, new person. I'm uh, really? I got the same habits I had the other day. No, no. You're a new person. The habits, God superimposed upon you. This is a. This is, takes a lot of das, a, a deep understanding of perception. So that's why das is juxtaposed with tshuva. Oh. Now, the Rambam in Perik Zion uh, says a uh, chiddush. Uh, he says a chiddush. Don't think that tshuva is only from bad deeds. No, don't think that. But tshuva is even from bad thoughts. If you have bad conceptions, I mean, you get a person, he's like Sadiq Gadol, learning 24-7. But for, he has some type of philosophical flaw. He thinks God has a body. Maybe he thinks uh, Torah Shal Peh is something that the rabbis just made up, you know, to, to, to have. But he's learning 24-7, and he's a Sadiq Yisrael, right? Or he has some jealousy. He's jealous of someone. He doesn't do anything about it. But he happens to be jealous of someone. Or he's competitive, or he's anger. Says the Rambam. Don't think you don't have to do tshuva on that. Just like you have to do tshuva, tshuva, you murder someone, or you eat a cheeseburger, or you eat comics all day. You also have to do tshuva on on a day of stroys and machshav stroys. Don't say tshuva is only for reitz What do you mean? Don't, why do we think not that way? I mean, what is the chiddush of this rambam? Well, well, of course, it's bad to have. Philosophical flaws or to have philosophical misunderstanding. It's definitely bad to have anger and jealousy. What, what is the Kiddush of this Rambam? Don't think 
that tshuva is only a ma'asim toifi. The answer is very simple. The Rambam never meant over here. Don't think that if you are jealous, you don't have to stop it. Or don't think if you have philosophical misunderstandings about God or about anything, you don't have, of course you have to, that's not the Chiddush, of course. If you're jealous, you're supposed to stop it. Yeah, you're supposed to stop it. His Chiddush is that you could rectify the bad thoughts or the bad misconceptions that you had. So for 10 years, you're walking around all jealous and angry or you think uh, the Rabbi Nishalayim is a, it has a body, whatever it is, whatever, whatever, your, misco- whatever your the flaw is. Say, so, okay. I gotta stop thinking that, but I can't rectify what I've been done for the last 10 years. I've been walking around that way for the last 10 years, and whatever, I've been having those bad thoughts and those are various in my head. I would think, that's the chiddush of the Rambam. Even that you could rectify. Why would you think you can't rectify it? Very good. If we're saying that the whole concept of tshuva is that we look at you as like a new person, if the whole concept of tshuva is that you're a new person, that's the way it works. A total severance from the past. Well. I would think, says the Rambam, when could I do tshuva when there's something that is, is uh, perceivable? The guy's been eating cheeseburger for the last 20 years, he stops. Oh, we see he's a new person. We see there's a physical change. Then I would think tshuva could kick in. But if the guy's just walking around jealous for the last 10 years or whatever, angry, and now he says, I'm not going to have that thoughts anymore. We don't, there's no perceptible change. There's nothing that is uh, manif- manifest. You don't see anything. So the Rambam says, I would think when the tshuva is on something that you don't, it's not perceptible, not perceivable, you can't see it. I would think, of course you've got to stop it. Of course, no question you got to stop it. I need the Rambam tell you you've got to stop it. But I would think that the chiddush of tshuva doesn't apply. You can't undo because we don't see, we don't see any change. That's the Kiddush of the Rambam. Even when you don't see any perceptible change, even there you have the Kiddush of Tshuva. Meaning to undo the past. Oh, this is what the Rambam has to accentuate this point. Now, how do I know this is true? Because there's another Rambam. In the end of Hilchah's Mikvois, he's talking about the mikvah. Look at what he says. He says, the whole Tum and Tahira is there to cover. And he says, if you go to the mikvah, there's no change that happens to you. All of a sudden, you're tar. A minute ago, you're tummy mace, you're sharing, you're tar. Oh, you go to the mikvah, you walk out, oh, tar. And he says, there's a remez to the dove. I'm going to give you a remez. He says like this. Just like if you do tefillah, even though, you can tar. Also, someone who decides to get his act together and to stop thinking bad thoughts, whether it's a philosophical bad thoughts, whether it's emotional bad thoughts. Since he decided to stop this and do tshuva, it is as if he has purified his brain. It says his brain has been dipped into a, a, purifi- uh, a water of purification, as in a mikvah. Like it says, What does Ram say here? He's saying exactly his point. He's saying, just like by the mikvah, for some mis- mystical, numinous reason, you go in, you go out, you're the same person. No, you were Tom, 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 Tom Yatar. Also by tshuva. But which tshuva does he talk about? He doesn't talk about tshuva if you're eating cheeseburgers and you stop eating cheeseburgers. Because there it's quite uh, uh, palatable. It's, it's quite clear what the tshuva is. His chiddush is that even though that, there was, that all you did was that you changed your outlook on life. You changed your thoughts. Even on that, there's tshuva. And even though we don't see any uh, perceptible change. That's what he's comparing. Just like by mikvah. There's no change at all in, your, in yourself. It's called your tar. He says, you find the same thing by tshuva. Which tshuva? The tshuva of Deus Reis. There too. Even though there's no perceptible change, you still have the chiddush of tshuva. And what's the chiddush of tshuva? Not, again, not to stop from here on in. To undo what was done. To totally undo what was done. Oh. E- now, I know I have a lot more to say, but I know it's late. I'll just end off. The Rambam says in Perik Bays uh, Hilchas Tshuva I'll just end up with this 
What is Midarka Tshuva? Pay attention. Mishrakik Harbe Minachet. You desist on the Chet. Umishan Eshmoi. The way of the Tshuva to change your name. Kolay Mashani Acher. I am different. The Aini Oisa Ish Shaosa Oisa Namaisin. I am not the same person that did this Maisin. Everything I said, it just said one line in the Rambam. He says, What is the way of Tshuva? Change your name. Now, what do you mean, change your name? You think, Oh, it's, it's, it's a way to like disassociate, you know, it's some type of psychological trick. According to the thing, it's much more than a psychological trick. It is what Tshuva is. It is, it is the way God looks at you, and that's the way you have to look at yourself. Totally reborn. Mishan Eshmei. Kaloi Mashani Acher. I am different. Amy Oisish. I am not the same person. Sha'asa Oisan Ha Maisu. Okay, Rabbi Say. So we, said, we spoke here about Tshuva, and I know this sounds like, wow, changing myself, changing a, a whole new person. But everyone knows, and all the Bible Muslims, it doesn't mean on every bad aspect you have. It could be, let's say you're doing 5,000 of errors. You could do on one Avera, this whole process, everything we spoke about, you could just do on one Avera. Or even a fraction of an Avera. On that fraction, you are a total new person. Don't walk away, uh, this is a, don't walk away, uh, this is not no relevance to me, uh, who am I kidding? I'm a new person, it, it it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not whole hog, it's not like all or nothing. It's in one little thing, one little thing. You, this whole thing could apply to one little thing. With that little thing, I'm a different person. New name, new everything. Okay, boys, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope we could uh, use some of this in that.